guilt has to do with an action that you've taken that you feel badly about because you feel that it, you know, it was the wrong action, it was a negative action, and you've been, you know, sometimes programmed to believe that you should not do this thing. Mm. And so you do it inadvertently or because you had to, and you feel guilt. So guilt is an internal experience that has to do with an external action you took. Guilt is sometimes related to shame because shame is now an external uh, uh, imposition on you because of something that you have done mm -hmm. or, or are. Mm -hmm. And so guilt and shame are really having to do with external, internal relationships. People make you feel guilty and you make yourself feel guilty. So it's, it's a very complex thing. Shame also is very complex. And guilt and shame are at the root of a whole nother set of imbalances that people are having more often. A lot of the depression and anxiety is focused around um, guilt and shame. Um, guilt sometimes and shame sometimes have to do with just not feeling that you're good enough. Um, a lot of self-love issues um, are related uh, to the guilt and shame. And so I can see right now trending globally where people are actually acknowledging this, these issues of guilt and shame and are trying to get themselves to love themselves, accept themselves as they are, acknowledge their authenticity and not be, you know, bothered by the external opinions of others where that's concerned. I have also um, found that parents can sometimes impose their will on children and so when their will is not done then children will grow up and become adults and still feel guilty or feel shame because they did not achieve the wants or the desires of their parents likewise leaders likewise teachers in school so those relationships with um, superiors or persons in authority have led us um, have resulted in a lot of the guilt and shame that we now experience the church and religion is also a part of the guilt and shame experienced by a lot of people we just have to call it what it for what it is um, norms are changing there are expectations, you know, of 30 years ago, of 40 years ago, that are just simply unrealistic in modern society. But still, we carry the guilt and shame because we still hear that little voice in our head. We remember what our grandmother used to tell us about this aspect or that aspect of things. And so we feel a lot of shame. It's time to let go of guilt. It's time to let go of shame. Accept yourself, love yourself. Start to pick apart the things that you are guilty about and see if they are man-made. Are they uh, societally imposed um, expectations? If they are and they're not serving you, you can let them go and not feel guilty about it. I mean, personally, I'm, I'm still reassessing a number of things and the things that I don't find relevant anymore because I've stepped away from expectations, from society, from friends, from those in authority, and I just reassess it. And if it's no longer serving me and I can't see the logic, I let it go and I'm no longer having the guilt. You know, when I was growing up, 
they told me that my nose was flat. I was ashamed of my nose being flat. But now that I realize that this is just how I was designed and built by the Creator, I accept it. Yeah? Again, the preponderance of women getting this part of their body done and this um, procedure to enhance their features, it's also a part of the guilt and shame that they're feeling from what society has said is beauty, what society has said will give them greater visibility in this world, acceptance in this world, in their field, and so on. My advice, reassess everything and start over from scratch. The beautiful thing is that we can, you know, flip the script and start over a blank page and build from there. That's the beauty of now. We have access to that. Release all the guilt, release all the shame, and see how your physiology changes. See how your relationships, your interpersonal relationships, also shift um, in the positive. With respect to parents and, 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 and imposing their will on their children, I think there are two things happening, actually, in modern days, where parents who suffered from their parents imposing their will on them have now given their children carte blanche to run amok and do anything they want. And so they're not really governing and setting boundaries. So I think we have to be careful to ensure that we are still maintaining some level of boundaries for our children, because children need boundaries to really function well. And then we have to just be careful of what we're imposing on our children. Yes, we want them to do well in school. We want them to um, finish their education so that they will be able to go out into the world and be the best that they can be. But if you have a child that is simply not academic, you cannot force a square peg into a round hole. Rather than force or impose your will and the will of the school system on that child, look at what the child is good in and then navigate them, help them to get better at what they're good at. So you're not imposing your will on the child. You're helping them to isolate their strengths and then you nurture their gifts and strengths. So I think it's important when we're discussing um, the guilt and shame thing to ensure that parents are just a little bit more aware of how they you know, treat their children, how they push their children so that children are not scarred and left with guilt and shame for not achieving what their parents expected of them, what their teachers expected of them, what their peers expected of them. Very important.